and welcome to Scale Car Garage. Back to the workbench, lots of projects that still need completion. So um, let's get right to it because um, this is something I've wanted to work on for a while and you guys are really uh, motivating me to get a lot of these things, well, finished. That's the great thing about hobbies. You know, you, you can do things the way uh, you choose to do them. So what I, uh, I envision for this car to be is a full interior, 132nd scale Cheetah with a front engine uh, and rear drive and uh, a brass chassis. So that's what we're also going to get into too, is we're going to have to make a chassis for this car from scratch. So let's get to it. Thank you for joining me here. Uh, we uh, may have to have this in two or maybe even three episodes, um, but hey, our longest journey begins with a single step, so let's get to it here on Scale Car Garage. Bill Thomas a self-taught engineer who began his career as a manufacturer of aircraft components was the creator of the Cheetah. He built the Cheetah using major components from the Chevrolet Corvette of 1963. In fact, Mr. Thomas had the cooperation of General Motors who at that time decided as a corporation to formally withdraw from racing. Ed Cole, an executive with the Chevrolet division at the time, provided unofficial backdoor support for the Cheetah effort by approving financing to build 100 cars for homologation in the production SCCA class to beat the Ford-powered Cobras of Carroll Shelby. The initial car was constructed with a chrome molly tubular chassis and aluminum body which had gull wing doors. Subsequent cars had a fiberglass body. It had fully independent suspension, front and rear, and used drum brakes, not discs. But the car had some issues, specifically with cooling for both the engine and the driver. The Cheetah is a front engine, rear drive car with the engine set so far back from the front axle, the exhaust manifold was over the driver's feet and the driver's seat was beside the transmission. Proper ducting helped to alleviate the engine heat management issues, but the cockpit was a different matter. Being a coupe, the driver was placed in an environment that was more than uncomfortable. The amount of heat from the drivetrain was dangerously excessive and presented a serious risk to the driver. However, with a curb weight of only 1,500 pounds, the car was blindingly quick. It also had a tendency to literally blow its own doors off at speed. Production fell short of the required 100 units, so the Cheetah was forced to compete against the Lolas, McLarens, and Chaparrales of the Big Bore Modified class of the SCCA. While fast, the car did not finish well, as it was in need of further development. This car was actually more successful as a scale race car than a full-size one. In the 1960s, the Cheetah sold very well as a slot car manufactured by companies such as Cox and Strombecker, which produced the car in both 124th and 132nd scale. In the early 2000s, MRRC and Carrera both released versions of the Cheetah, with Carrera making the car in both 124th and 132nd scale. Okay, so let's take a look at the components we're going to start with, with the, um, the build that we're going to do here on the 1964 cheetah so um, of course the body from uh, Carrera is just it's really nice uh, very very lovely uh, very well painted and we can do a little bit of uh, you know, a few little details on it uh, you know, but uh, we got to build the chassis first okay. but I also wanted to show you uh, some things that I had in my collection that um, from the 1960s, just to show you how uh, how cool this car is. But first, let's let's see what we got. So we have the body, uh, rear valence, front, all there. We have the chassis, which we're going to need because that's going to help us set the um, the wheelbase 
for our, uh, for our chassis that we're going to make from scratch. I'll show you how to do that. Plus, there are bits that we want to use on the final model, like the, uh, like the exhaust pipes on each side. Very cool. We have um, the motor. We may as well try and use the same motor, see how it performs. I'm sure it'll be fine with some proper gearing. I think it'll be okay. And um, the interior card, which is flat, well, actually, we can still use bits and bobs from it because we're going to put in a, a full interior, and I'll show you where that full interior uh, will originate from. But it's the dashboard we're going to uh, use as well as the roll bars because it's already fitted to the body, so um, it'll save us having to make it. Um, and especially the, the uh, detail on, I don't know, hopefully you can see that on, on the dashboard is really quite nice. It's tampo printed. So we'll be very careful and cut that out and, and, and use that with the full interior. So those components we will be using. Of course, the first step is to build the chassis. However, here, when I was much younger, yeah, my goodness, um, I had this cheetah, which was made by a company called Strombecker. And by the time that um, Strombecker was a company that uh, was based in Chicago originally, and then uh, eventually uh, ended up, believe it or not, in Canada, because a, um, uh, I'm not quite sure if it was a company or a conglomerate or an individual or a couple of individuals purchased the, um, uh, the uh, Strombecker company and moved it up to Canada. And um, this was the cheetah that was actually done in the 1960s in 132nd scale. Originally, it had a, um, a metal chassis, an, al an aluminum chassis, and I think at one point perhaps a brass chassis. Please, if I'm wrong, uh, let me know. Um, but uh, by the time that I was able to actually have this, it, it went to a plastic chassis. And instead of screws, they had these blue sort of pressure things that kept the chassis attached to the body. But you can see it's actually quite a nice little representation of the car. And, and when compared to Carrera's version, um, it's, it's pretty good. Now, there, there, you know, there, there were different body styles of the Cheetah, believe it or not, uh, as it progressed through its production run. So both of these are actually correct. This how, uh, Strombecker version is, is an earlier car. Uh, and you can tell by the venting and so forth here, but you can see it's it's pretty close. However, when I was young, this was absolute unobtainium. There was a version of this cheetah that was made by a company called Cox, and it, Cox made it both in 132nd and 124th scale. But I actually managed to finally get a 132nd scale Cox version of the cheetah. And if you look at this, um, Think about this. This was done in the 1960s, long before computers and uh, 3D printing and scanning. This was done by people who were artisans. They really were. Uh, Cox was based in uh, California. And not only is the body just lovely, um, the details just perfect. <laughs> I'm going to be very biased here. But the chassis was made of magnesium. Think about that for a minute. Cast magnesium chassis for what is essentially a child's toy. Um, well, it was more than a child's toy because people actually race these, but if you, it's, it's just lovely. And um, I think a time that may never be duplicated or replicated um, in the same way that uh, it was a unique time in one-to-one -one car racing, it was a unique time in scale car racing as well. And this actually, this car runs. We'll, uh, maybe we'll get it on the track to see how we do against our chassis once it's built. Uh, but if you take a look at it, it is just beautiful. I did not build this. This was actually something I purchased from uh, a fellow uh, scale car enthusiast who uh, wanted it to uh, go to a, a good home, which it is in a good home. Um, I drive it sparingly, but um, I do drive it, and it drives very, very well. It has modern uh, urethane tires, because um, the old ones are actually, I, I have them, but I haven't put them on because they're really quite old, and you'd probably crack up. But if, it, as, you can, as you can see, all three cars here, uh, let me just take this chassis out. 
um, just a remarkable um, view of scale car and, and full size car history. And we have two from the 60s, really, even though this was probably manufactured in the 70s in, in, in Canada, but essentially done in the 1960s, 1960s and 21st century. But the spirit is, uh, you can feel it, it's, it's the same. And uh, yeah, you can see it's a little wider, but you know what, what's really interesting is that, um, you know, the, the cars are, uh, capture the essence of, of the Cheetah. So enough of me rambling, let's get to, uh, let's get to building a chassis. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start soldering a chassis, but before we start, I just wanna show you a few of the basic things you'll need uh, to set up a chassis for your car. At least, well, let, let me put it this way. These are the things that I use. There are many things you can use. I mean, some people just start soldering and they're really, uh, their eyes are good and it's square. Let me show you the kind of things that, uh, that I use to um, make sure that, well, we can uh, <laughs> get a, a chassis that works. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's uh, take a look here. So I'm gonna point at things that um, I use. Sometimes, you know, I can use just a piece of, uh, uh, this is ceramic, but it's actually porcelain ceramic tile. It's relatively flat, it takes a lot of heat, uh, really good for, uh, for soldering. Um, what I also use is a piece of marble. And the great thing about marble is that it, um, believe it or not, it takes a lot of heat, very, very flat, great for putting pieces on for, uh, for soldering. Now, to align things, you might want to use uh, a jig of some sort. So, I created one. This actually is a ceramic filter. You can get these online, and uh, usually one sort of uh, area is flatter than the other, but this one actually is really good. And you use, these are 332nd um, axle, well, actually it's piano wire, that fit in the holes absolutely perfectly. And that's how you can line up uh, axles, pieces of brass, and then you've got a jig that you just put the pieces in and solder away. Talking about solder specifically, what I tend to like to use is, this is actually rosin core solder, it's 60-40, but it's very thin, and you'll see why that's important once we get started, because you don't need a lot of solder. And for the inevitable mistakes, because I make them, you may not, but I certainly do. Um, this is actually copper braiding that you use to wick up solder that, that um, is in the wrong place or too much of it or whatever the case may be. Um, that's what, what this is for. Uh, we'll get into the, now, these clips are really, really useful as heat sinks. So you use these to sort of avert thermal energy away from places that you've already soldered and you don't want ruined. Very useful. Flux, a torch, uh, vernier calipers uh, for measuring. Make sure that your chassis is square. And uh, here's another type of jig. This is from the 1960s. Uh, talk about retro. This is the coveted Ruskit Adjusto jig. Yes, that's right, the Adjusto jig. And uh, actually does a really good job for setting the, um, the wheelbase. So that's the core of our, um, of our, of, of our tools and, and items that we're gonna be using. Uh, also, it really helps if you have a couple of pairs of tweezers handy. The other thing I would really strongly recommend, and this is not only just sort of a, a health and safety issue, but it really helps if because the flux is technically toxic. So you wanna wear rubber gloves or urethane gloves, some sort of glove, not only because of the flux, but also because of the brass. You're gonna be cleaning the brass and there's oils on, you know, oil on your, on your hands. And you don't want that oil going to the brass because you've done so much work and you'll see how much work it is to clean it, make it um, perfect, shiny. You don't wanna get your fingerprints on it. So. Gloves actually come really in, in, in handy for that. So in handy gloves, I apologize for that. That was really, really unintentional and not funny. Um, anyway, so we're gonna get started on the Cheetah chassis, but I just wanted to show you sort of 
what I use to uh, to get the chassis started. All right, now let's get going. What we're going to do is, uh, forgive me, I do need my glasses for this. Okay, take the vernier calipers and we have a piece of brass. This is going to be our uh, main chassis rail. So let's take a wee bit of a measure of the chassis itself and see how long it is. 9.2 is bang on. So 9.2 centimeters. All right. We may need more brass. The great thing about cutting brass is if you do it straight, so you can just snap it. So we're going to come a little short. So we got one rail. There we go. So that's good. Ta-da. And there we go. Make sure the plastic is off because you don't want that in. We'll put the other one to the side. We'll size it up here. And this should in the same way. There we go. So what have we got? We've got two rails the same size. How about that? <clears throat> okay, so what uh, the, the marble piece really comes in handy with, here's the motor we're going to be using. And we're going to have a front motor configuration. There is the chassis. We want to find out sort of where to put the motor relative to the body. Now, interestingly enough, the actual car had the motor really quite quite set back, so I might try to do the same thing. Uh, see what about there? You know that might work just just great. There's going to be a drive shaft to the rear wheels, which means that we're going to need something to carry that drive shaft with a, a crown uh, uh, spur gear into the crown gear. So. What I've done is I've, I've taken apart a motor that basically was done, no good. So we have the can, oh, isn't that cool? And in the can is a little bearing, and we're gonna use that. We're also gonna use the shaft from the motor, and I've already started to take this apart, and then I realized I wanted to show you folks how to do that. Um, this shaft comes right out, of, uh, right out of the middle of the motor. You can see how that, that's gonna come right out, no problem. Um, anyway, I, I, I'll show you how to do that. But right now, see how the can has a flat side and a perforated side here? And that perforation, those perforations are actually to hold the magnets in place. T took the magnets out, we don't need those. But we do need the can, and we have to push uh, or, or place the uh, uh, empty can in the right place. But you see, the great thing about using a motor that's, well, essentially the same, is that it fits without any issue and you have two parallel um, rails for the main chassis. I mean, isn't that great? I think that's fantastic. Um, and what we can do here is we can take a look at the um, Carrera chassis and go, okay, so whereabouts do I have to put the carrier for the rear axle to work? And you don't want it too far, you don't want it too close. And bear in mind, we can always change this. So let's take a look. Um, that's probably a good place. Okay, that's not gonna work because, oh, no, 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 no. We'll have to put the, it's gonna be a very short drive shaft, very short drive shaft, just like the real car. So that's, that's what I think is cool. So now what we have to do is, uh, clean everything up. So we've got to put on some gloves and we're going to get to it. We're just going to go into execution mode. What we're going to do is we're going to solder the two brass uh, rails to the motor and to the empty can. And that'll be the starting point of our chassis. So uh, let's get to that. Let's start sanding our brass. Helps if you do it on a flat surface. Um, and that makes it, gives it a good chance of that you're not going to bend the brass tubing, which you don't want to do. 
Now you also have to do this with, believe it or not, the motors. And we'll, we'll size everything up again too. But you see the um, steel here? So you wanna scuff that up. Again, giving a surface for the solder to bite into. Here we go. On both sides, because we have two rails here. There we go. Motor. And also on the can. You can see how it's shiny and getting scuffed. Again, just to give it something to bite. Take some flux. Again, this is why we wear our gloves. You can see the flux here. So we're going to put flux on the motor, on just the steel. You can see that? Okay. So there are three really important steps to soldering. Step number one, cleanliness. You want what you're, the, the pieces that you're soldering together to be clean and scuffed up. So that's what the sandpaper is for. Number two, you want to use flux. And not too much, but you want to have, make sure that you have flux on the pieces that you're soldering. And number three, heat. You want to make sure that there's enough heat and, and what you're heating up is the metal, not the solder. That's really important. And that's what soldering irons are really good for because you touch the metal and, then, and not the solder. However, I'm going to try and show you a method that I've uh, learned to use that really does a great job using a torch, especially when you're aligning things up. Because I don't know about you, but anytime I align something else, something up with it with, and touch it with a, a soldering iron, inevitably I move something and it would be out of line and be frustrating to start again. This way, um, it's really, really cool. It, it, it works so, so very well. So we're going to take a piece of solder with our tweezers and we're going to put it just where the rail is. You see that? Right there. And we're going to set up all four, all four points all four solder points. And as I said, this is where tweezers really come in handy. And you just want it there. And this is the great thing about using it on a block. You can just rotate this, you see? Oh, let's use this side now. Solder over here, whoopsies. Okay and solder over here. All right, so let's get the torch going. Prime it, turn it on. There's our torch, now you can watch. I'm just heating up the metal and suck down. There we go. There's a nice solder joint right there. And a nice solder joint right there. Let's do the other side. Got the torch going. Watch the solder here. And it should suck in right nicely. There we go. And this one, hopefully. Just heating up the metal, not the solder. There we go. Done. So as you can see, of course it's a little hot right now. I wouldn't recommend touching it yet. There we go. Now everything is nicely soldered. We now have the basis of our, of our car. And believe it or not, let's see how hot this is. Oh, that's still pretty hot. That's still pretty hot. But you know what we have to do is we have to wipe that up because it is covered in flux. So let's put it over here, wipe it up. There we go. It is still a wee, a wee bit warm. It is still a wee bit warm. But as you can see, if we take our 
body. That's going to be, that's going to be our car. So the next bit is setting up, let's put this to the side. We wanna set up our wheelbase. So we're actually gonna, I'm gonna use the Rusket Adjusto Jig. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna just undo one so we can move it. And you can see how you can adjust the wheelbase sliding this part back and forth. So we're going to take two axles and we're going to adjust it so that we have perfect alignment. I think that's it right there. How does that look? I think that's it. Right there. There's the wheelbase. Quite nice. All right. Just back in. And we can take, and this is where we're going to put our front and rear. Okay, so I've pre-made some axle carriers uh, by soldering a round tube onto square tube. So I've manufactured those. Now we're gonna put those axle carriers on the frame rails. And I'm uh, gonna try and show you a close up just how this all works. So bear with me, I'll talk through it as best I can and show you uh, just how to solder this all up. Okay, so here are the axle carriers. They're very tiny, as you can see. And the axles, so got everything. Now, here's our flux. I've cleaned everything already, by the way. I didn't want to bore you with, uh, with that part. So I'm going to put some, some flux here. Can never have too much flux, although I guess you could. Flux there, flux here. Move this off. This is the front. Hold that right where it is. Flux here and flux there. All right. Let's do the rears first. All right. So you see, I'm putting the carriers I made through the axle. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And we're going to put some flux on the bottom here as well. There we go. And you can see they're nice and shiny. I hope you can see that. Now, here's where the axle goes in. And we'll have to make a few little adjustments here, but essentially, and we'll have to trim it at some point. But we want to make sure that it's sitting absolutely, that the square tube is sitting on the square tube like so. There we go. This is where your, actually what really works best is if you have a little cup rather than a flat surface so they don't roll away. <clears throat> We're gonna need four small pieces. One, two, three, four. Four pieces of solder. Okay, there we go. And let's get the fronts ready. So flux on here. Okay. Slide the tube through. Axle. Go. And slide this one. axle here. If you can see that. Go. Now we've got our solder. And forgive me if I get in the way here a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put this on here like so. There we go. Back. Where the solder so. is and the flux. And now watch how this all works. And we're just going to heat, see so heat the solder. Uh, away from the there you go, and it just gets sucked in. Beautiful soldering joint. Let's do the beautiful soldering joint. Can you see that? It just goes right in. It's beautiful. 
Let's do the rear now. Turn this around. And you're just heating the brass, as, as you can see. Heat the brass, heat the brass, heat the brass, and then it just goes, wham, there you go, it's done. And we'll do the next one. And boom! Once you get into soldering, it's really kind of cool. But um, again, don't have to touch it with a soldering iron because nothing moves. And look at that. Of the motor. Oh, I know what you're wondering. What do we do about that can? Aha! Well, I think we're going to have to save that for part two. I'm going to split this into two parts. Um, but I still, I just wanted to initially show you that there is no real mystery to soldering. You can solder a brass chassis. You can do it. You can. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, we're going to continue building this chassis and complete the cheetah in part two. But uh, thank you so much for uh, for being here. Look at look at this. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here uh, at Scale Car Garage um, for part one of the Cheetah Brass Chassis Build. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe.